Justin Trudeau clearly learned nothing from the disastrous Freedom Convoy crackdown. Once again displaying arrogant contempt for protesters, he unleashed militarized riot police to crush dissent outside Calgary. Peaceful citizens face rows of armed officers and automatic weapons, as if they were violent thugs instead of patriots standing up for their rights. Trudeau seems obsessed with using force to dominate frustrated Westerners protesting his economy-killing agenda. This brutal suppression immediately strengthened the backlash as defiance spreads. But Trudeau remains dismissive and oblivious, attacking the victims of his policies rather than taking responsibility. Heavy-handed efforts to subdue protesters again reveal Trudeau's fear of average Canadians reclaiming power. He failed to grasp the lessons of the convoy. Now a national movement rises in indignation at his burdensome taxes and tone-deaf elitism. Trudeau sows division and contempt daily, recklessly courting conflict with citizens stripped of patience and civility. A deepened chorus demands accountability. This prime minister has abused power for too long. The people's reckoning has arrived at last. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. Once again, demonstrating his contempt for average Canadians, Justin Trudeau has deployed over 100 RCMP riot police officers armed with automatic weapons to brutally crack down on peaceful protesters opposing his punishing carbon tax. Still deaf to the lessons of the Freedom Convoy disaster, Trudeau seems obsessed with using heavy-handed police tactics to silence dissent against his disastrous policies. Outside Calgary, patriotic Albertans exercising their democratic right to protest Trudeau's economy-killing carbon tax hikes were met with rows of intimidating officers in riot gear. With the police involvement here at this level, this could elicit an even bigger response like what we saw at Bill River. Is that what they want? They think they all need to call in sick, take COVID tests, and, and shut her down and say, I can't make it into work today. Did you used to have faith in police? Um, not really, but now it's really bad because they have tarnished the, the badge. Like, it's, it's, I have no respect for them anymore. They should have stood down in Ottawa, but they didn't. So right now what they're doing, they're working for their corporation instead of taking care of we the people. So they're not taking care of us. They're ready to pounce on us any time, and that's very sad. They have hundreds of officers, and some of them have automatic weapons. Just, uh, what are they going to do? You know, they've, got, they've got too many people down here that just elicits a negative response, and, and it turns people against them, and then they wonder why. We saw what happened in Ottawa, we see what happened here, and we saw what happened in Kansas, we saw what happened in Mill River. It's atrocious that this much money is being spent on this, and we've got as much rampant crime in these communities, and they won't do anything about it, but they'll they'll stand arm in arm against civilians who are just exercising their God-given rights to actually protest the taxes, the carbon taxes, yeah. the cost of living, and we've had it. The protest started yesterday and it's still going on on the second day. When is it going to end? Well, I've, I've packed for three weeks. Uh, there is a, a few of us who have packed enough food for three weeks. Uh, there are some really nice people in the town close by in Cochrane that have volunteered to come and do our laundry for us. So we would like to stay here for as long as it takes to end the carbon tax. Seems like they, the government is expecting this to evolve into Milk River, hence the huge police presence. But let me ask you this, is it time to kick RCMP out of Alberta? RCMP have no place in this province any longer. And that's what needs to happen here is the Alberta government needs to do a patch over and take the good RCMP officers that want to leave this force and become the provincial police force. And we'll leave the rest of these brethren behind. We'll call it a day and Alberta will, will set the, the, the trail for how we're going to do policing in our own province. And it won't be beholden to Ottawa and the government in Ottawa that pushes these people out here. It's a scene more fitting for violent criminals than law-abiding citizens decrying taxes draining their bank accounts. As one justifiably angry Albertan put it, we've got so much rampant crime and they wouldn't do anything about it, but they'll stand arm to arm against civilians who are just exercising their God-given right to actually protest the taxes. But Trudeau remains characteristically arrogant and oblivious, unleashing his militarized police forces against frustrated Westerners rather than admitting his own role in their financial pain. The massive show of force has only strengthened the backlash, with more Albertans flocking to join the anti-carbon tax demonstration. Showcasing the utter frustration and disrespect for authority that Trudeau's policies breed, one defiant Albertan took the opportunity to mercilessly troll RCMP officers as they retreated from the Axe the Tax protest.
After seeing police weaponized to crush dissent rather than tackle real crimes, Canadians are losing respect for institutions abused as political tools. Trudeau's tyrannical attempts to silence protests through police crackdowns are only hardening resistance among the public that feels betrayed by his disdain for democratic rights. Similar scenes are unfolding across the country as Trudeau cracks down on citizens pushed to the brink by his economy-crushing policies. On the Saskatchewan border, Mounties descended to monitor drivers protesting at a crawl pace. Videos of the border's slow rolls showcase the depth of outrage at Trudeau's tax tyranny. <laughs> Hit with everything from inflating housing costs to skyrocketing groceries, Canadians are barely scraping by as Trudeau keeps piling on new ways to pick their pockets. His latest carbon tax hike scratches another 3.3 cents per litre from the bank accounts of already struggling Westerners. Yet to tax elites like Trudeau remain oblivious to the real pain of Canadians having to decide whether to put food on the table or keep the heat on. Trudeau still refuses to admit that his destructive environmental policies have harmed Canadians far more than they've helped lower emissions. His ruinous carbon pricing scheme has already added almost 20 cents per litre since being imposed in 2019, despite rebates that don't come close to offsetting the damage. Everyday essentials like gas and groceries carry the hidden Trudeau premium of carbon taxes embedded in their prices. And what does Trudeau do as Westerners teeter on the financial brink? He laughs and gives himself a giant raise on the backs of taxpayers already buckling under his policies. The hypocrisy would be astounding if Canadians hadn't come to expect such contempt from the trust fund PM. While detached Eastern elites reap bigger paychecks, Western families despair over choosing between starvation and homelessness. Yet tone-deaf Trudeau still claims carbon pricing is a minor factor in the affordability crisis his policies have stoked into an inferno. Tell that to the single parents rationing food for their kids while the carbon tax devours a bigger chunk of their grocery money each week. Trudeau's heavy-handed efforts to demonize and intimidate carbon tax protesters betrays his deep fear of a narrative he can't control. He knows images of everyday Canadians demanding relief from his punishing policies are kryptonite to his woke branding. So out come the riot cops in a crass attempt to dominate the visuals and crush dissent. But seeing the state intimidation apparatus mobilize against them only hardens the outrage. Righteous citizens know carbon taxes siphon money from their wallets into the big government machine Trudeau heats recklessly expanding. His policies pour gasoline on the inflationary inferno while his unrestrained spending fans the flames. Trudeau's surprise announcement of a multi-billion dollar housing program demonstrates his arrogant detachment from economic realities. This staggering intervention will only exacerbate shortages and drive costs further out of reach for average Canadians. Even provinces are rejecting Trudeau's unilateral housing scheme as federal overreach. 
With premiers condemning his arrogant plotting and citizens chanting in resistance, Trudeau remains captive in his progressive echo chamber, deaf to the real struggles of Canadians. He keeps forcing destructive policies like carbon taxes onto Western families who can hardly survive his cost-of-living crisis. Their anger and frustration is entirely justified. But what's truly laughable is that a few days before the protests and before Trudeau deployed the riot police against peaceful protesters in a press conference addressing the Toronto police arresting several anti-Israel protesters over the weekend, Trudeau stated that it's a fundamental right that people are able to protest freely in this country. There were protests in Toronto over the weekend where there were a number of arrests made. Uh, despite policing obviously being a, a provincial jurisdiction, a lot of people still turning to you for your perspective. Um, I guess what steps will your government take, perhaps working with the provinces, to both you know, balance the obligations of law enforcement with Canadians' rights to peacefully assemble and, and free speech? It is a fundamental right that people are able to protest freely in this country. Uh, it is really, really important in our democracy uh, and in democracies around the world that people have that ability to mobilize, go out, and express their concerns for policies here at home or, policy, or things happening overseas. That's something that this government will always defend. And that protest needs to be done peacefully in a way that doesn't endanger uh, other people's lives. We expect police to both obey the laws and enforce the laws. Uh, and that's something that I think is necessary. Just waving a Palestinian flag um, is not in itself uh, a, 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 um, something that is unacceptable or anti-Semitic. People are allowed to express their concerns on every side of the event. It's when you start making people feel unsafe in their neighborhoods, in their schools, in their communities, uh, that we fall into things where, um, where police do uh, need to uh, lean in and make sure that everyone is safe and feels safe. But that is a balance that is ongoing every single day by police forces across the country. And as a federal government, we expect people to obey the law. We expect the police to obey the law, but we also expect the police to enforce the law. The same prime minister who claimed people can protest freely went on to crush dissent with riot squads. Trubio's contradictory words and actions revealed his phony support for democratic rights. He only respects protests benefiting his agenda, not citizens challenging his disastrous policies. This hypocrisy foreshadowed his coming suppression of dissent. Trudeau needs to stop attacking the victims of his policies and start taking responsibility for the economic wreckage. The voices of protest he tries to extinguish with riot police speak for millions of Canadians fed up with his hypocritical elitism and chronic tone deafness. The crackdown on dissent cannot mute the defiance. Canadians are awakening to their power and demanding a future free from Trudeau's burdensome taxes and policies. The prime minister ignores them in his own peril. While Trudeau desperately tries to quash swelling outrage, other leaders are adding their voices to the indignant chorus rising coast to coast. Provincial heads fuel the fire by vocalizing their own opposition to Trudeau's oppressive carbon pricing regime. Ontario Premier Doug Ford amplified the defiant refrain, warning a massive hike risks of voter revolt that could sweep away Trudeau's government in the next election. Ford warned Trudeau that the punitive carbon tax has to go or the prime minister himself will be going once fed up Canadians vote in 2025. I'm so thrilled to stand with you. I just wish I could say I was happy about what we're here to talk about today, yesterday on April the 1st, against the urging of premiers of every political stripe right across our country, the federal government raised the carbon tax yet again, this time by a whopping 23%. Today, the carbon tax now cost 17.6 cents per liter of gas. And just think of that, the people filling up. Uh, every single time you see that clicker go, that 17.6 cents, that should be in your pocket, not the government's pocket. This isn't the first time they've raised their carbon tax, but it couldn't come at a worse time. Now, because of this awful carbon tax, Families across Ontario spent their Easter weekends lined up around the block waiting to fill their gas tanks up one more time before the increase kicked in. I saw it just down the street from where I live. People were lined up everywhere I went. People were lined up. What does that tell you? You know, folks, we have so many people here. I could fill this field, not with hundreds of thousands, a million, millions of people that are against this carbon tax. I'm here today, we're all here today to make it clear. We stand against the carbon tax. 
because we know Ontario families deserve to keep more money and their hard-earned money in their own pockets, not the government's, because we know Ontario businesses can't afford more costly burden. And at a time when the cost of living has never been higher, leaders at every single level of government, they have a duty. They have a duty to do everything we can to keep costs down for the hard-working people of Ontario. That's why, for months, I've been urging the federal government to scrap the carbon tax. And i got to crack that. It hasn't been months. I've been chasing them for years on this thing. And pause yesterday's increase. Not everyone can say they've done the same. For weeks, as the carbon tax hike loomed, Bonnie Crombie has refused to stand against it. Instead, she's dodged questions and desperately tried to change the subject, all while refusing to stand up for taxpayers. In fact, just last week, when given the opportunity to vote against the carbon tax, every single one of Bonnie Crombie's Liberal MPPs sat on their hands and did absolutely nothing. We shouldn't be surprised. Bonnie Crombie is the queen of carbon tax. As a Liberal MP, she was one of the first people in, the, in Canada to support the carbon tax. She led the carbon tax charge when she was in Ottawa. As mayor, she raised property taxes every year she was in office, including last year, she gave the largest tax increase in Mississauga's history. And as a Liberal leader, she refuses to stand up against the carbon tax. Ontario families, farmers, and small business owners, they deserve better. They deserve leaders who will stand up for them. They deserve a government that will fight to put more money back into their pockets. That's exactly what our government is doing. Last week, we extended our gas tax cut another six months, keeping 10.7 cents of every single liter back into your pockets instead of the government's. That's on top of eliminating road tolls and scrapping the license plate sticker fee. We're saving drivers hundreds of dollars every year, money that's going back into people's pockets where it belongs. And you can, and you can bet as Bonnie Crombie, the queen of the carbon tax, remains silent, our government will never stop fighting the federal government on their terrible carbon tax. I want to thank everyone for coming today, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. While hardships imposed by Trudeau's taxes sparked swelling public outrage, his shameful neglect has also left the troops tasked with defending Canada struggling to survive. Despite serving their country, these soldiers were denied basic assistance while training far from home, forcing staff to create a food cupboard so they wouldn't starve. These troops bravely sacrificed to protect our freedom, yet the same government that unleashes riot police on its critics denied them even basic provisions. From carbon tax protesters to impoverished cyber trainees, outrage spread at the callous inhumanity of a prime minister who ignores suffering when it suits him. While Trudeau jets off on luxurious vacations and showers media elites with largesse, soldiers making sacrifices for Canada are abandoned to poverty. Even their reimbursement claims were delayed for months, creating extreme financial hardship. This debacle stems directly from literal cuts and neglect of the military. Program mismanagement left soldiers ineligible for housing allowances in costly Ottawa. Backlogging delays in their security clearance kept them from advancing for up to two years. Is this any way to treat those sworn to defend our nation? Trudeau pays lip service to supporting the troops while his negligence leaves them struggling to survive. He is failing his solemn duty to provide for their well-being. Our troops shouldn't have to rely on donated food while training to protect Canadians against cyber threats. This scandal is symptomatic of Liberals' general disrespect for the military, as evidenced by misconduct cover-ups and failure to procure needed equipment. Trudeau pretends to admire the troops while giving them neither the resources nor support they require and deserve. Conservatives recognize strong, well-supported armed forces are essential to safeguarding our nation in an increasingly unstable world. Soldiers are not props for liberal photo ops. It's time Trudeau started honoring the troops with actions, not just empty words. Our troops have been patient long enough. But no more, neither soldiers nor citizens will suffer Trudeau's abuses in silence any longer. Provoked by callous indifference to their plight, the people are rediscovering their voice and power. Trudeau cannot maintain his tone-deaf arrogance as outrage crescendos into protest movements erupting from every corner of Canada. The drums of defiance beat louder each day, fueled by the pain of Trudeau's policies. Citizens have run out of patience. Citizens are awakening to their power and finding their voice again. 
The defiant horns blaring on Saskatchewan highways and crowds mass outside Calgary are just the beginning. Trudeau can deploy all the riot police he wants, but he cannot crush the people's righteous anger. His tone-deaf dismissal of Western hardship fuels the flames of indignation. These protests shouting out against Trudeau's indifference are a warning tremor before the main quake, a national uprising demanding deliverance from his burdensome taxes and policies. Trudeau has abused Westerners long enough. His comeuppance is at hand unless he finally starts respecting Canadians again. The suffering troops abandoned by liberal neglect are also recognizing their value and finding courage to speak out. A reckoning is coming for a government that betrayed its sacred duty to support the troops. Veterans who sacrifice for Canada will accept nothing less than justice from Trudeau. Premiers are already in open revolt against Trudeau's arrogant unilateralism on housing and carbon taxes. As national unity frays, arrogant overreach will hasten Trudeau's downfall. Western alienation has reached the boiling point. Canadians have run out of patience with Trudeau's hypocrisy, incompetence, and chronic failure to address the urgent crisis squeezing working families to the breaking point. Citizens are finding their voice again, and the deafening chorus calls for an end to Trudeau's abuses of power. The Prime Minister has only himself to blame as his citizens forsake civility and take to the streets. You reap what you sow. Trudeau sowed division and discontent. Now they will reap outrage and upheaval from coast to coast. The reckoning has arrived at last for an arrogant leader who ignored the people too long. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Justin Trudeau has learned anything from public backlash to his handling of the Freedom Convoy? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.